way to um, make it go backwards, so you should move. Okay. Show me. I'll stick this up. The pups are being good. Hello, Titus. Hello, Khaleesi. Such good dogs. You can see the area that the goats were in has been completely cleared out by the goats. So, they have been moved to the exact opposite end of the paddock. So you see where that shelter is? All that tall brush and vegetation, they are enjoying the heck out of. You sure like your brother's birthday present. What? I think you've been riding it more than he has. I don't think so. Come on, Autumn. Are you taking turns? Autumn, I need you to come with me to go on the other side of the barn so you can go out to the paddock. Are you going to come with me? Come on, beautiful girl. Come on. Come with Mama. I love you. What'd you, what'd you say? Hi. Did you say, Rowan, I love you? Yeah. That was sweet. Because he gave you a turd on your own tractor, huh? Yeah. All right, have fun. Drive up the hill. Where are you turning? You're going to run me over. Look how close you're getting to me. Oh, 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 yeah, you got it. Yeah, you're getting the hang of it. Hi, Autumn. Sweet girl. Hi, Flopper Nutter. Do you miss your friend? Huh? It's kind of weird looking into the buck pen. Not seeing Eugene here, but it makes my bucks look a lot bigger. <laughs> so as most of you know, Bo was our um, primary sire when we first started breeding. And then Fluff and Nutter came in as junior herd sire. So we have now retired Bo due to his kind of low immune system is, is all I can say. He seems to like catch everything. You notice he's so thin. He got a case of lice that we've treated now, but he's recovering. He actually looks a bit better. He was looking even more ribby. So um, none of the other boys in his pen got any goat lice. So he's just real susceptible to things. And I just feel like it's better to take him out of the breeding program. But we also were able to add Peter Pepper to the breeding program. I mean, he's not breeding yet, but he will be. And I think he's going to make a great replacement for Bo. Bo will be remaining with us as a pet because he was my first baby. And I just can't find it in me to part with him. So we're going to get his health back up and work on getting him healthy so that he can look nice and chunky like Fluffinada. And they both need, or they all need copper right now. So everybody's going to be getting copper this week and getting back on track and looking shiny and healthy for the spring. It's funny. As much as I felt like Eugene was a pain in the butt sometimes, I miss him. He was just such a sweet boy. So as you can see, <laughs> The goats have been trampling through here. You can see the paths. This was just solid wheat. And they've mowed it down and created paths through it all. What are you doing over there, Autumn? You hear mommy coming, so you're gonna come to me. Are you enjoying, are you enjoying the foraging? Autumn is like a puppy dog. She's been following Ryan and I around during chores and just having fun with the boys. They like to play with her. What I found really interesting was yesterday was the first time the goats were out here and the plants that they chose to eat first. So here, they ate the top sub dock. Dock is high in tannins, which helps fight off parasites. They also ate all of the wild lettuce down to the ground they um what else what else what, something over here that i saw oh the solidago right here this was goldenrod or solidago which is also an immune boosting herb they ate 
all the verbian, verbena, it's gone. So you can tell this is the hay that Ryan put out yesterday. They didn't touch it. So I didn't have to bring out any more today. Shy was scaring me this morning because she was making sounds that sounded like, oh God, what's wrong with her? Like almost like labor sounds, but it turns out she's in heat. Over here on the mulch pile, all of that was blackberry. They have stripped it of all its leaves. They love blackberries, very high in vitamin C and very good for them. It also helps if anybody has diarrhea. We have had some parasite issues. We have had some diarrhea issues, but we are treating it as best we can and trying to get through this heavy parasite load of the spring that's being caused by such a hot, wet winter. None of the parasites died off. So moving them to this new pasture area was a huge part of fighting the parasite cycle. So we treated them heavily over there where they would shed all the eggs out onto that pasture where it's now going to be put to rest. We're not going to use that pasture again for a good while. And then we bring them over here that has been resting and let them eat to their heart's content without any parasite fears. We are still keeping a close eye on everyone, but things are improving. It's been kind of a stressful couple of weeks here. And that's part of the reason why I haven't been able to do videos as, as much as I'd like to is because my babies have been sick. So I've been, I've been nursing them all back to health. Ruby is doing good. She's not one of the ones with issues. She just gave me a ton of milk. Hearts, you're looking fat. Good girl. Those of you who've been with us for a while, Hearts was skin and bones from a rib injury that affected her rumen. And she has now completely recovered from that time. Luna was one of the goats that had the parasites. You can see she's got a clean butt now. No more diarrhea. Fancy girl. Fancy girl, my favorite goat in the whole world. My bestest, bestest friend. She is due to kid tomorrow. So we are keeping close eye on her and Daisy Mays. They are both due to kid tomorrow. And you can see her udder is starting to fill up. Her vulva is looking puffy. Her belly is looking huge. She's been moaning more in her sleep when she's laying down. She moans a lot. <laughs> Fancy Girl is not one of my good milk producers. She's my favorite because she was my first and because she has got the most stubborn, obnoxious personality and I tend to gravitate towards those kind of goats. <laughs> She's my diva. She is my diva. So I love her so much. Her, I'm hoping that her and Fluff and Nutter will produce a banded doling. I have never gotten a doling from Fancy Girl, so cross your fingers and say your prayers because it would be so awesome to get that from her. And if they had the white band, because her and Fluffinutter both have a white band, so it's a good chance. Oh, I wonder what this flower is. I don't know its name, but Kitty seems to like it. This yellow top flower. It's not yellow top. I, that's toxic to livestock, so I'm pretty sure they wouldn't be eating it if it was that. Um, okay, yes, Daisy Mays. She does not look very big. I don't know if she carries small. This is our first kidding with her. She's not a first freshener. And she is from a beautiful line of goats at Big K Farms. And you can see her udder is filling in, but her bulb is not quite as swollen. And now here's the real surprise, guys. Rosemary is more likely that she is bred now if you notice the other chub. So we thought Rosemary was bred several times because she's always fat, but this time she's got a little udder chub happening. So we think that she is due May 16th, if that's the case. Poor Shy was one of our goats that had the parasites. You can see she still hasn't completely cleaned off on the back end. She's no longer suffering from diarrhea. I should probably just give her a bath. <laughs> I don't want to do that. If anybody has noticed the little bumps on her side of her cheek, those are salivary cysts. We've had that once before in our herd, 
not sure what causes it, whether it's thorns in the plants, like she's eating now, have thorns, but they usually take care of themselves with no problems. Shady was also one of our goats that was fighting parasites, and she seems like she is coming back slowly but surely. We'll get her back into proper weight and health. This is the first year that we've ever had to use chemical dewormers on our herd. And I will tell you, it hurts me. It hurts my soul to do it. Every time I do it, I cry inside, sometimes outside too. But I know that when the herbs are not working, when the infestation is dramatic, as it is with barber pole. Barber pole is a very severe parasite that grows exponentially in numbers inside of the goat system. So dealing with barber pole is not the same as other parasites most of the time. So we do a combined effort of continuing with the herbs and the immune boosting support and the vitamin B complex to help them get over the parasites, but we have also had to use some parasites from the chemical world on a few of these goats that just would not kick the parasites. It's a necessary evil in keeping our goats alive. And when it gets to the point where I'm worried about whether they're gonna survive the parasite infestation, that's when I know it's time to use the chemicals, whether I like it or not. So it's a tough decision and it's a personal decision. I think that it's up to each individual farmer to decide at what level they're willing to let an animal go downhill if the herbs are not working because the herbs are very good at preventing parasites but once you have a major outbreak or if you have major environmental conditions like a hot wet winter, that's when you have to really dig down deep into your soul and choose what you're gonna do for that situation. And it could be different next time. Next time I might try doing the herbs even longer and fighting off without the chemicals. But I had several goats that were not doing good at all. And I made that decision and I'm sticking by it and I'm happy that I did because I don't want any of my goats to suffer because of my health standards. So my health standards say, herbal all the way but if I come down with pneumonia you bet your butt I'm gonna go to the doctors and get antibiotics I'm not crazy shy is crazy she's in heat and she sees the boys over there she's staring at them and so her moaning like that scared me today because she was one that was fighting parasites but you can see she's bellowing for the boys in fact when I went to take them out she stopped at the buck's door and would not go any further even though all this lush vegetation was out here she just wanted to be with the boys I'm like no we're gonna get you in prime health before we breed again in addition to continuing with the herbs even after treating with chemicals we continue with the herbs and we are adding red cell to the two that have severe anemia. Not all of them ended up to the point where their eyelids were pale, but two of them did. And we are continuing with the red cell daily for that to help fight the anemia because the anemia is really just as bad as the parasites sometimes. We moved three of our ducks from the duck tractor. We got the Muscovy and the two drakes that are not anacondas out of the tractor so that our anaconda eggs could be pure anaconda. In addition to the benefit of having pure anaconda eggs for hatching or selling as fertilized eggs, we have these three to help us clean up under the quail cages. Like you guys remember last year, they make sure that there's no waste from any quail food that we spill because they clean it up from under the quail cages and that's such a great system of balance.
Well, what I have planted in the garden this year has done fantastically. I just haven't got it planted yet. So that's a little hard in, on my ego, but I know that in time, I will get it done. We have had some complications this spring and we're just working through them the best we can. And all of my tomato plants are begging me to get in the ground and it will happen eventually. The good thing is, is we live in Georgia. We have a very long growing season. I have planted tomatoes in July and gotten harvest before our frost. So I'm trying not to stress about it and just enjoy the moment of the day. Something I stress over and over to other homesteaders is how beautiful and wonderful it is to barter with other homesteaders. It's amazing how many things you don't even think about as possible trades that you can make with people. So we have 10 Royal Palm turkey eggs in the incubator and they hopefully will hatch soon. They came from my dearest bestest friend, Trisha at Willow Creek Homestead. If you haven't checked them out, you need to go check out their channel. They're a wonderful family vlog with a focus on homesteading. And they do have the most amazing rabbit colony um, setup that I've ever seen. And I'm just so proud of what they have done and what they have accomplished. And they are just great homesteaders. You definitely should go check them out and follow their family's journey. And once Jonah gets the quail cages built, I will be sending fertile quail eggs to her to hatch out. And it works out as a great trade, you know? I needed more turkey, she needed quail. So it's a win-win. pretty funny when there's so much vegetation that they can be lazy and lay down and eat it. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six goats laying down and eating while they're laying down. Goofy goats. Lazy goofy goats. So that's where we are now. That's what we've been up to. And hopefully I can find the energy to do some more filming now. So thank you for your patience while we work through our difficult times. And we'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.